Hi folks, so it's Matt again, and we're now going to talk a little bit about um, solving extensive form games uh, with incomplete information and moving a little bit beyond subgame perfection. And this is just uh, to give you some impression of, of stuff that's out there in, in game theory. We're not going to spend too much time on this, but I'll give you a, a flavor of it. And, um, you know, the, the idea of, of solving these kinds of games with, is that, that makes things difficult is, you know, subgame perfection and backward induction uh, had a lot of bite in games with complete information because we could uh, analyze parts of the tree. There were a lot of subgames figure out what's going on in that, and that would tell us then uh, we can simplify that, and, and that gives us an idea of, of what's going to happen in other parts of the game. With incomplete information, there's no proper subgame, so players don't really know exactly which node they're at in the game, and that can be difficult. So there may not be many proper subgames. Um, so uh, the, the basic reasoning doesn't apply, subgame perfection does not apply directly in a lot of games. It doesn't have much bite. But there are ways of extending the reasoning. So there are ways to take the same kind of credibility ideas that are behind subgame perfection and apply them in these kinds of games. So we'll just take a peek at that um, and just give you a, a, a taste of it, but uh, we're not going to go into it in too much depth. Okay, so let's look at a simple game. And uh, this game is one where um, it's uh, an entry decision by uh, one, say, one firm, um, f player one. Um, so they have a decision of either E or N. So think of E as enter, N as not. And player two is uh, another firm, say in a market. So they're already in a marketplace selling a particular good. And firm one's deciding, should I enter into this market and compete with the other firm? Okay, so I've offered, you know, there's a coffee shop open on a particular corner. There's somebody else thinking, okay, should I enter right across the street and have a competing coffee shop. So firm one is now thinking about entering, firm two is already there. And the question is, what happens once they, they uh, if firm one entered? So if, if in terms of payoffs here, if uh, firm one does not enter, if this player does not enter, player one gets zero and player two ends up getting uh, two. Um, so the, the payoff for player two here is two if firm one does not enter, and that's that's true either way it happens, if firm one doesn't enter. And uh, then if firm one enters, then the payoffs depend on whether uh, the, the incumbent coffee shop, say, is one that's going to fight. Um, so F stands for fight, or A for acquiesce. So basically, they can either say, okay, look, we'll live and let live, we'll have two coffee shops, we'll lose some of our business, or we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe by um, offering special coupons, discounts, uh, we're going to make this miserable for the other, for the other uh, company. And so the payoffs actually depend on whether Firm 2 fights or not. Um, and moreover, the, the incomplete information here is about the uh, strength, how good um, uh, player one is. So they could be a strong player, probability a half, or they could be a weak player. So the node up here is a move by nature. So nature moves first, randomly picks whether player one is strong or not, strong or weak. So with probability a half, they pick a strong player. With probability a half, they pick a weak player. And player one gets to see the outcome of that. So player one, this new coffee shop, I know whether I've got really good coffee or not. Um, player two doesn't know what the quality of, of firm one is when firm one enters. So if firm one is the strong one or firm one is the weak one, player two cannot distinguish between those two different situations, and that's why we have this information set connected here. Okay, so that's the structure of the game. And basically, where does the strong and weak manifest itself in terms of payoffs? Um, it manifests itself in terms of, for instance, what happens if Firm 2 fights. So if Firm 2 fights a, a strong Firm 1, they both get minus 1. So they both lose. If, if Firm 1 is strong, uh, Firm 2 fights, th that's going to be costly for both of them. If firm, one, uh, firm 2 fights a weak entrant, then Firm 2 gets 0 and Firm 1 gets minus 2. So weakness means that they do less well in, in, in fighting. Um, we can also, in this particular game, have a situation here where, where the, uh, 
you know, fir firm one, um, the weak version of firm one, even if, if firm two is accommodating, is eventually going to go out of business. They're just, they, you know, they've got really lousy coffee. Um, they're not going to make it. Okay, so let's try and analyze this game using subgame perfection. Um, well, with subgame perfection, there's actually uh, many equilibria of this game. Um, and part of the problem is that when we're trying to look at subgames, we can't just chop off this part and say it's a subgame because it's not. Uh, this node is connected to this node for player two. They're not sure whether they're over here or over here. So we can't chop off the small pieces. And essentially, the only subgame is the whole game. So the only subgame in this game is the, the whole game. And so subgame perfection is just the same as Nash equilibrium in this game. So if we're looking at, at Nash equilibria, let's look for a couple of them. Um, let's take a peek at one where firm one does not enter, right? So no matter what, firm one does not enter, uh, whether they're strong or weak. And firm two plans on fighting. Okay, so firm two says, I'm going to fight you if you enter. And firm one says, oh, that's bad. I'm going to get negative payoffs. Um, therefore, uh, they don't enter. OK, so that's one Nash equilibrium. A Nash equilibrium is uh, one, um, if they're strong, they don't enter. If they're weak, they don't enter. And firm two uh, only has one information set, and they, f they fight. Right. So that's a Nash equilibrium. OK. Um, it's also subgame perfection, given it's subgame, there's only one subgame in this. Uh, what's strange about that equilibrium? What's strange about that equilibrium is if you look at the fight decision of player two, the fight decision is essentially uh, a dominated strategy in the sense that it gives minus one if the player is strong compared to one if they were acquiescing, um, and zero if it's against a weak. Whereas one, if they acquiesced. So no matter what the type of the, the uh, firm, play, f two should really acquiesce, right? They get a higher payoff from that. So this um, is somehow not credible. So the, uh, we're losing credibility, but it's, it's still consistent with Nash. If player one really believes firm two is going to fight, then that's fine. And if player one really never enters, well, player two can say they're going to fight and they never have to. So um, that following that strategy doesn't hurt them in the sense that they're going to get the two no matter what. And so they don't need to deviate away from F if they're never called on to move. Okay, So that's, that's a, a Nash, but the, the what if here, the off the equilibrium path behavior of player two claiming they're going to fight is not really credible in this game. So... Um, what if firm two was going to acquiesce, right? So there's another uh, strategy where, where for two, um, for, for two, we imagine them acquiescing. So what should one do? Well, if one then is strong, they should enter. They get a payoff of one here, zero if they don't. If they're weak, what should they do? If they're weak, well, they shouldn't enter, right? Because they get a minus one here, a zero here, so weak should not enter. Okay, this is another Nash equilibrium, and in some sense, it's a more credible Nash equilibrium, because in this situation, uh, firm two is called on to 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 move. They're actually doing um, a best response, so they're following a best response of acquiescing, and Firm one is doing the best it can. If it's strong, it's entering. If it's weak, it's not. And this whole thing hangs together as uh, another Nash equilibrium. So here there's a couple of Nash equilibria. There's actually more um, where you have firm two doing some mixing and then firm one staying out in some circumstances and, and not in others. It depends on the, the particular mixtures you work out. So there's actually a lot of Nash equilibria to this game. And uh, so when we, when we want to analyze this, um, subgame perfection corresponds with Nash. It doesn't give us much bite in terms of picking out one or another. Um, but one idea behind doing this um, and analyzing these games is to try and build in the idea behind uh, subgame perfection in terms of sequential rationality. And so there are equilibrium concepts that explicitly model 
um, players' beliefs about where they are in a tree for every information set. And there's two, two solution concepts in particular known as sequential equilibrium and perfect Bayesian equilibrium that have key features where they have players, as part of the equilibrium, you specify what the beliefs of the players are. And it should be that the beliefs are not contradicted by the actual play of the game and players best respond to those beliefs. So you have best respond in, in, and so forth, but you also make a requirement that the um, beliefs aren't contradicted by the actual play of the game and players have to best respond to their beliefs even off the equilibrium path. And that's going to have bite in this game. So if we look at this game again and we require that players have beliefs at different information sets, so here what we would have to have is now player two has to say what's the probability that I'm here, what's the probability that I'm here. So they have some beliefs. But notice in this game, no matter what those beliefs are, they should always acquiesce, right? So once we give player two beliefs here and say they have to best respond to their beliefs in, in any, at any node where they have beliefs, then that ties down and says, okay, it, player two has to acquiesce. Then for player one, if player two is acquiescing, player one is strong, they should definitely enter. If player two is weak, they should definitely not enter. So we end up with a unique prediction in this game, whereas with subgame perfection there were many. Um, so the idea here is we, we have these extra impositions that, that players have beliefs. First of all, they're not contradicted, so it has to be that what they're believing is consistent with the way that other players are playing. And uh, um, players should uh, best respond to their beliefs, which is imposing credibility at every information set in, in the game. Okay, so this makes it, you know, ends up making a lot of, of predictions in these kinds of games. Um, and, the, you know, the challenges here we see with incomplete information, there may not be proper subgames. Um, the ideas of sequential rationality can be extended, but they require extra layers of uh, solution concepts. And, you know, once we do this, we're, we're also layering on a lot more than we had before. And we've seen subgame perfection already can be quite demanding of players. Here now, they also have to be very good at inferring things based on where they are. Um, but when you begin to see things like professional poker players playing, they're very much uh, going through these kinds of calculations. So if another player raised a bet, um, what does that mean about what their, their hand is likely to be? Um, should I be, you know, what, what should I do under different circumstances? If I have a strong hand, should I call? Um, should I raise their, uh, and, and so forth. So, so what's going on in this kinds of solution concepts, nonetheless, um, are, are, are very well suited to analyzing specific kinds of games. So th there's a lot more to study, um, even beyond the scope of this course, um, but th these are fascinating games to begin to wrap your head around.